And we'll take a look at seaming this up. Uh, finish painting a very basic color texture. Uh, this is what it looks like. You can see there's uh, some seam problems here at the back of the ears. And you could go back and forth in Photoshop and potentially clean that up uh, a lot better than it is anyways. Um, but it's easy in 3D, so I just wait and do it over here. Uh, the neck doesn't have much of a seam. I just let that go to black. And since it's just a simple color, it's pretty easy. I need to fix that up right there. Uh, and then uh, the arms aren't going to have any problems. The legs have a little problem at the upper leg here. And you can see it's actually difficult to see it from some angles exactly what you have based on the lighting. So what you want to do when you're going to uh, do a 3D seam is plug this up into incandescence instead of color. Um, and that way it'll, it'll just sort of be the exact color that the texture says it is and you won't have any lighting contributing to the final output color. All right, so, um, and I will also do something different with the eyes. I'll set up a new material for those, but sharing the same texture. Um, the material would have a lot more um, reflectivity and specularity than the regular body does. I'll do that after we do the seaming. So uh, there is one little prep step um, that you'll need to do if you have multiple objects that share uh, a texture, and that is select the other objects that you're not seaming up and just assign something else that they don't have uh, the texture that you're going to be working on because otherwise Maya will add in uh, these things called switch nodes uh, that can often get in the way and you just have to change a bunch of different hookups so uh, this should uh, simplify things just I'll just put them back to Lambert and then I'll graph the, uh, this texture and like I said I'm going to middle click and drag and map this to, to incandescence and then I'm going to uh, find the color and delete the color connection. Uh, now what I have is just a fully incandescent uh, texture and again that makes it really easy to see the seam issues sort of no matter which direction you're looking at this thing from. So I can see very clearly um, how I have to fix these seams. Alright so in this case I have just black and white or off black and off white uh, to use as textures for seaming this thing up. So uh, I'll just show you how to do this with painting and I'll also mention uh, the cloning way as well. Okay, so I'm going to select this, and I'm just going to bring back my interface and uh, maximize this. This way you can see some of the error messages that might pop up, or warning messages rather. In the rendering menu set, go to texturing, 3D paint tool, and pull out the options here. So here's the first one. Some surfaces have no file texture assigned to the current attribute. Um, it will not work on the PSD, so I need to assign a texture. So this is actually down in the, in the 3D paint tool, uh, down under file textures. I want to set this to incandescence. That's what I'm going to be painting on. And then I want to assign slash edit those textures. I'll click that and then it'll ask me what size, what file format. In this case, uh, this is correct. Assign edit and the brush should change from uh, an X to the thing that shows the P there. So this means painting mode. Uh, you have uh, two different modes. You can use the artisan tools or the paint effects tools, uh, and you can paint you know directly onto this with all of the paint effects um, brushes. It's it's pretty neat. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to stick with artisan, um, and then I'm just going to paint the colors that are actually here. So, um, oh, let me just show you what that did, just so you are aware of this change. I'll we'll go into the hyper shade here. It's actually replaced my color connection or my incandescence c connection I had from the PSD to this new file that it's going to save and I'll show you where to find that in, uh, in just a minute but just be aware that that happens sort of in the background. Alright so I'm going to go ahead and paint this. Um, I can paint either direction, uh, paint this out black or paint it up to white. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select this color, I'll just paint it up to black for now. Uh, choose the brush that allows me to uh, have a nice soft edge and just sort of brush this around until I get something that I like. Um, okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'll try to go the opposite direction and see if uh, see if I can clean this up at all around that corner. That looks better. Okay, so that looks that looks pretty good. Um, again, this is just uh, a very simple version of uh, seaming this thing up. Back to the black. Okay, 
that's looking looking okay. Got to get a little bit more of that seam out there. There it goes. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'd be all right with that. A uh, little bit janky on, on the inside here, but where it looks uh, really quirky uh, and it's not at a seam, that's something you can address in Photoshop. And I find it far easier to work in Photoshop uh, than it is with these tools. These tools are um, are pretty good and obviously way better at doing the the 3D seams than uh, Photoshop is. But at the same time, like I have a hard time getting this stuff to work out really nicely. So I might address some of that issue there in Photoshop itself. Um, okay, a couple other little ones down here to deal with. So this seam is looks like it's harder at the back. So let me just bring that up. And over. Okay, and of course you can paint with, um, you know, a different opacity. I'll go down to white here. And you could also isolate select this to sort of get it uh, so that you can work on it without having to look through. So I could make a selection like this and then press shift I and that'll give me isolate select. And this way I can just look at this thing directly from the side and paint on it this way. Um, and then press Y to re-enter the uh, paint tool here. Okay, and see that definitely makes it a lot easier to, to paint this area. Okay, well, that's, that's looking pretty, pretty good. Um, a little bit of a weird thing happening right there at the seams. Let me just paint that out real quick. Let's right, see what we get there. Okay, so that seems to have gotten that. Um, okay, and then just have nothing selected and press Shift I again, and that'll get you back to this view. I'm just going to maximize here. Okay, so it's really just one more seam. Uh, well, actually, it looks like underneath the arms here, I do have a little bit of a seam I need to deal with. This side won't have it because this is uh, a contiguous area in my UV map. So uh, you can see here those are sewn together. But this where it meets here, um, the back of the head right here, little places to touch up. So I'd continue doing this and just clean up the rest of those seams. I don't see any point in uh, doing the whole thing here. I'll just show you what the process looks like. So um, I'll go back into the 3D Paint tool. This um, will save by default. So when I click Save here, it'll save out uh, that image as well. Uh, so let me just go ahead and, and, uh, and pull that up. OK, uh, so here it is here. And what it's going to do is it's going to go into um, wherever your project is set up. It'll go into Source Images. 3D paint and then the name of the file and then the name of the texture itself. So I'm going to go ahead and open this in uh, Photoshop. Okay, and I'll go ahead and, and drop this one into my actual PSD. So I'm just going to select it here and drag it over and drop it in here. Uh, and I'm just going to put this at the top of my color and call this. Um, All right, so this is our seamed uh, seamed one, and actually, it probably makes sense to go ahead and put this underneath um, some of these things. I, I probably want the eye and the inside of the mouth. Uh, actually, I don't need the inside of the mouth in, in here. That's just you can just see it just expands um, that area, but the eye itself, I think, probably will have gotten. Yeah, it got um, over, um, overwritten there um, because that was not part of the texture that I just dealt with. That was on a separate object. So I definitely want this seamed version to at least be below the eyes. Um, I'll just do that. And now I have a fully seamed texture over here. And like I said, um, as I was brushing those ears out, I could actually come uh, back in here and clean up. Like right there, it pinches in just a little bit. Um, and back here, it just don't want to mess around with the seams because that's what um, we just took care of in 3D. So these little areas where it gets a little squirrely, I could just paint that right out no problem um, in Photoshop. Just don't touch here or here and it's still going to be seamed up just right. Um, so this this looks like it's going to going to work fine and then I'll, I was, I'm just going to show um, hooking up a couple more things and uh, as far as textures I'll do a spec map maybe and then um, 
hook, hook up the eyes also and uh, that should be the whole process so from here I'll go back over to Maya and hook this back up to the PSD so I'm gonna oh, open my hypershade here and instead of the um, file texture which will be hooked up I'm gonna go over to textures here and middle click and drag from bare color to here and choose color uh, and that will hook this up to color and then I don't even need this file anymore so this is the automatically generated seeming file and it's hooked up to incandescence which I don't want anyways I'll just press delete so now I have my seamed texture applied to bare mat and everything should be happy here so uh, I could go in and clean this up a bit but um, that basically works fine okay so uh, let's take care of some of those other connections I was talking about um, so I'll create a new material here another blend this is going to be my eye mat and I'm just gonna take the eccentricity down have a really sharp highlight go up with my spec roll off and then increase the specular color I just want this to have a lot of specularity and it'll have a lot of reflectivity too. when we get around to rendering we can uh, tune that up alright so uh, I want to use this same texture here so I can either a middle click and drag uh, to an open field over here which just got covered up or just middle click and drag to here and choose color uh, they do the same thing okay uh, so let me go ahead and assign that select out my two eyes middle click and drag up or right click and drag up rather and that'll just ha give the eyes a nice high specularity um, so uh, that's the way that you typically want to work with these uh, file nodes you'll use one texture node to drive multiple materials that are driven from that texture so um, you know the eye is there's no reason to create a separate um, texture for the eye it all fits onto one map and I just want to feed a different material uh, with that so there are other places where you, you would choose to do something different like the nose for instance um, I want the nose to be a little bit more reflective than uh, other pieces and I'll do that with a spec map which I could have done here I could have uh, done the spec map on here and that would that would change the specular color but it, uh, I would have to do other maps to change um, the eccentricity and stuff like that. It can just be more of a pain. In this case, the eyes are just easier just to do like this. Uh, so that gets me my my basic um, underlying color texture. And then uh, probably the next step I would take on this guy would be adding a little bit of texture to this. Uh, and uh, you can do that multiple ways. I have this um, this spec set up here which I can just move up here. It's just a really basic um, fur texture um, I got online. Uh, you might check places like cgtextures.com have a lot of really high quality um, images. Uh, a lot of them are already tiled. Um, so this was a tiled one. I just took it out to black and white and threw it into a spec map. But I might want to actually use that um, in here on my color. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab this and then just alt click it and drop it above the seamed version there and then I'm just going to choose difference on this um, and that looks like looks like it's probably going to do me okay um, I don't want it to be nearly this bright nor do I want it to go over the nose or the mouth so I am going to go ahead and drag those above the seamed up version and that ought to uh, fix that problem so now the eyes the nose and the mouth should be uh, whoops I need to go above it uh, hair free uh, looks like that worked well and now I just want to grab this guy and maybe take his opacity down uh, to something a lot less severe I just want a, a hint of the the texture in there I don't want it to be a super dominant aspect of this so even that's probably a little too high but um, maybe 25 percent looks good go ahead and save that and uh, I should go ahead and mention that there are some things uh, that don't work well uh, with Maya as far as PSDs go. Let me see if this one works. If it if it does, then that's great. But if it doesn't, I just want to mention and show you how to fix that. Uh, so I want to go ahead and uh, update this the same as I have been. Back in here and just double click to bring up the attribute editor. You see that it's thinking about it. And there it's refreshed. I think I went a little too subtle um, potentially on that. I, can't even hardly see the effect of it at all. So I'll head back over here and just up this to maybe 50% just to see what 
uh, what this looks like. Okay, so there it's showing up uh, a lot better. Uh, it might be, yeah, it's actually probably fine. I want it to show up, but I don't want it to be super, super obvious. So the cool thing about doing it this way is um, I don't have to worry about the major seam issues here. I have this black, the, the hair is actually contiguous under here because my seam is, is uh, much further up here. So there will be a little bit of a problem right in here. You can just barely see it. Uh, I wouldn't even worry about it in this case. Like this is this is probably clean enough for me. Um, I put seams in reasonable places, so where you can see a seam here, it doesn't really bother me too much. You can see it just a little bit right here. Um, but even being out at all, I can't see that seam. So I'd probably be okay with that in this case. But you could go back with the 3D um, paint tool and there's actually clone operations. You have all these different operations down here that you can do. I should have mentioned this before. All I needed to do was paint, so I just left it on paint. Um, but you can blur, smear, paint, clone. Um, so uh, this this works this works very well um, for uh, things that are, are that already have sort of a hair texture on them. You could just clone across that, and the hair would would go straight across the seam. In my case, I just added it afterwards. It's, it was just easier uh, to do it that way in terms of operation instead of dealing with the the seam itself. Um, okay, so this is this is pretty much how I would leave this. I would uh, maybe increase uh, some uh, some of the spec. Uh, let me just take a look at what we have going on in here spec wise. So on the bare mat, it's pretty diffused out, uh, pretty low spec color. I think uh, just just to show it, I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna pop a new uh, PSD file and then navigate to my bare texture. This time I'm going to choose the spec color, which again, this is the same exact map that I just applied uh, at some small level to the color channel itself. And I'll call this um, spec texture. Looks like I've got some naming irregularities, but that's all right. All right, and go ahead and hook that up to the bare mat. Um, I'll just hook it up to spec color. And that should um, stick that the hair um, in this case, it's maybe my uh, specularity is so low that it's sort of dropping it out a little bit. You see the effect a little bit in the darker areas. As the light casts over, you see the hair a little bit more pronounced, which is a nice effect. It's just sort of additive on uh, the hair that's already there and visible. I think what's happening here is the, the white just sort of blowing out past that. Um, but I, I like the way it looks on, on the black. Um, so I might just tune this up a little bit so that the, the white showed it a little bit more in the color area. Uh, but that's how you would want to hook that up as well. Um, go ahead and make sure I talk about this in depth for one second. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and map the inputs and outputs on these. So even though these two are pointing to the same PSD, they're pointing to different layer sets, right? So this one's pointing to the color layer set and this one's pointing to the spec layer set. So it's one PSD that's feeding two different um, texture nodes here, and one texture node feeds multiple uh, final materials. So that's the way you, you typically want to work. Uh, it's more efficient to work like this, and it's really easy for, uh, for transportation and stuff. You have one file that goes along with, um, with your model. Uh, and in some cases you'll have more than one, but it's it's really nice to be able to knock all those things in, so including if I was doing bump map or anything like that, I could drop that in there um, really easily. So uh, this this little spec map thing gives a nice little touch, and I could do the same thing for the nose maybe, just make these uh, stand out a little bit more using that spec map. Um, but that would be uh, reasonable enough, that's pretty much the, the way I would do the setup. Um, so, uh, all right, I think that wraps up the, uh, the texturing section. Hope, uh, hope that helps.